Hey guys, this is Scott. I wanted to do a updated video of some nine ball ghost practice. I have not done one in quite some time. And uh, recently I've had some requests kind of come through email or through lessons, kind of working on some, some common principles, position play, things like that. And I thought it'd be a good idea maybe to just capture a practice session and do some commentary over it, kind of in the style of the old Accustat uh, self-commentary videos. And hopefully that'll be helpful to some people watching. Uh, just as a point of reference, I had surgery um, at the time of this video about a month prior. And this is only about the fourth or fifth time I've played. Um, I actually was hitting the ball pretty decent, which I was pleased with. Uh, however, I did see some compensations I was making that uh, hopefully probably no one else would notice, but I did. And uh, basically just things I'm doing to help ease some of the discomfort and stretching and things like that. So that'll hopefully get a little bit better than the next couple of times I play. I don't practice the ghost nearly as much as I should. Uh, I get a little lazy, especially recently. It's hard to break the balls for long periods of time. That's but um, when I do play, I usually play races to seven or nine. I think I actually captured it out to eight on this video. And uh, hopefully you'll find uh, the commentary informative and helpful. Please feel free to reach out on the YouTube video or go to my website at mypoolblog.com. And you can find all my contact info there and feel free to reach out with any questions you might have. Thanks, and hope you enjoy. Started here. Um, I'm just going to try to just like, comment as we go. Um, one comment first on the break. Um, I have not been breaking the balls at all uh, for the last two months, and that's absolutely necessary because of my uh, abdominal surgery and things like that. So the control, the timing, all of that is just not very good. Um, and uh, so don't expect any miracles with that, uh, but hopefully that'll get better over the next few weeks as I can practice. Um, I am using the AccuRack on this. Uh, my Magic Rack got misplaced somehow. Uh, I, I like the AccuRack as well. Um, it, it's been sitting in my car probably for a year all rolled up, so it wasn't laying flat, and so I removed it every time I broke. Normally I'll just leave the rack on, on there, but... Um, uh, couldn't do that this time. So anyways, I broke the balls now. The two ball only goes in the side or the lower right corner as you're looking at it. Um, so my intent here was to try to get uh, maybe up above the two and, and see if I could just, uh, you know, shoot it down in the side pocket. Um, wasn't a very easy opening shot, uh, especially when I haven't been playing very much. But uh, you can see I un I uh, didn't come over as far as I wanted to. I wanted the cue ball to keep going up a little more toward the five, but uh, it worked out okay. A little sloppy. So here's a classic situation. Just get back to the center of the table. Don't need to do anything fancy. Um, just, you know... You practice a lot of drills and patterns uh, that get you to the center of the table. Uh, the speed control, the muscle memory for that should be pretty easy. Here I make a little mistake if I miss. Yep, I, I wanted to hit that a little more pure to come behind the six. And I put myself in a situation where I made the shot uh, missable because of the distance and being on the rail. So just trying to take a little extra time here before I get down, make sure I'm lined up good feel good on the shot um, and try to recover and I hit that pretty decently speed wise in the middle of the pocket so um, so I have just enough room to make the 7 next to the 8 um, and so really just about looking at my angle making sure I leave myself a good nice straight in type shot make things as simple as possible from here just don't want to make any silly mistakes
Okay, so I make a uh, I make a mistake here shooting left-handed. I, I caught the ball a little full, um, and uh, got kind of fortunate that the cue ball landed exact almost exactly straight in. All I had to do was just give it a little pop in, but um, you know sometimes that's going to happen. One thing to mention here, my philosophy at least, um, I watched a lot of the pro players play and have been for years, and I used to spin the ball a whole lot more than I do now. Now I just try to keep things kind of simple and straightforward. Consistency is the name of the game and wins a lot of matches, uh, along with good decision making and everything. And um, you know, but I when I look at things, you know, we're all going to miss balls, we're all going to miss misjudge our speed or whatever, but. Uh, what you'll see throughout this, especially with me not playing a lot in the last uh, couple months, is what I call uh, micro mistakes. Um, it's, it's, you know, they're not horrible mistakes, um, but it's where you end up being maybe a few inches uh, on the wrong side of your line or leaving yourself a little more of an extreme cut than you planned or maybe a little more straight in than you planned. Um, and for those types of things, they're going to happen. Uh, again, not professional. Don't do it for a living. So, um, you just—it's all about recovery on those shots. It's all about, um, you know, keeping your head together and making the best decision you can from that point forward. So, I'll try to point some of those out here and there. There's there's plenty to choose from, I think. Um, so, anyways, simple opening shot. Just give yourself whatever kind of angle you want get back to the center of the table, uh, almost where the cue ball is right now. And again, I'm going to walk around look at my angle. Uh, it's important when you do this as well. It's a very small consideration, but don't look at where the two ball is. Make sure you look at where the ghost ball position is, where the cue ball is going to land with the stop shot, because that extra two and a half inches can make a big difference in your angle. So don't get lazy and just look at the two or, or whatever ball it is. Look at look at where the cue ball will stop. Um, it's important just to make sure you get the right angle you're looking for. Now I'm having to go back and check my angle as I walked around the table. Uh, I, I could have done that as well, but I, you know, since I didn't think about that, you know, it's good just to take another peek. Again, if you're wrong sided on the five ball, you might end up having to go three rails around the table. Fairly easy shot for a good player, however, it introduces more risk. Um, and, and because of where the nine ball is, you have to get on the other side of the six, ideally, so you're not running into balls and leaving things up to chance. Uh, you know, once I get up, once I cross that line of the six ball going into the pocket and I'm on the bottom side of that line, I have options. I can come straight up table, one rail like I did, you know, makes things easy. Got a little straighter in on this than I wanted, and you'll see I end up hitting this a little bit too, uh, too much of a follow shot. I wanted to hit more of a stun follow. Um, and the ball went forward a little quicker, but... You'll see a lot of good players even choose or opt to shoot these types of shots. Uh, when you're playing 9 or 10 ball, that the last ball, the 9 or the 10, tends to end up in the rack area a lot. Um, and you should practice, either through drills or just practice, um, shooting balls in that break area, in that rack area, into the corner pockets from different angles. Uh, both when you come down a little too far and practice back cutting the ball and then also practice hitting like those half ball type shots from you know maybe the side pocket area or like with the third diamond or even second diamond so it's pretty frequent where um, you know you end up having that type of an angle and you just want to feel confident with with making that shot so now we're at two zero if I'm counting correctly Again, try to close your eyes while I'm breaking. It's it's. I think I hit. I think I hit one or two, pretty well. But 
but uh, most of them were, were not good. <laughs> okay, so I didn't hit that break. I hit it okay, um, but I did make a few balls, and, um, you know, worked out all right. So I have an almost straight in combination here on the 2-6. Um, combinations are probably the worst part of my game. Um, I read an, I read a book a long time ago called The Science of Pocket Billiards, and it, it went into a lot of detail and charts about all kinds of things about the game, but one thing that stuck with me was exactly how difficult combinations are, and for some reason, I think ever since that point, I've just, I just hate leaving them up to chance, so when they're straight in like that, it's not so bad, but I've missed some really easy ones over the last couple of years, I, so... Anyways, here's a perfect example of a micro mistake. I, I, I had an easy shot. I had a perfect leave, but I hit the two just a little strong. Now I got to go three rails around the table on the three ball. Um, had I stopped a few inches above the line, I could have just drifted down toward the five a little easier. And I came up just a little short here. Not bad. Again, when you're a decent player, you practice those three rail patterns. You should have a good feel for speed. Um, and I make another mistake here, even though nobody maybe would know, but I intended to go two rails out of the corner, and back up above the eight in the side, and I actually hit it. I either misjudged my speed or maybe caught the ball a little full, um, and, and it slowed down, but thankfully it slowed down just enough where I actually had a great shot in the corner. Uh, sometimes you'll end up with a 50-yard line type shot, but still pretty recoverable when the ball's that close to the side pocket. I even almost missed this, and I don't really know why. Might have just not really paid attention as close as I needed to. So anyways, not a bad start. Um, like I said, this is probably only my third or fourth practice session since uh, in the last two months. Um, and then I've played league twice. Um, so... All total, I think, I, well, the first time I played, I only played for about 20 minutes. But uh, I watched a lot of pool while I was recovering, and uh, I had a lot of great ideas before my surgery, just to, some things to simplify in my own game. I'm, there's still some things I'm working on, but mentally I feel like I'm playing better than ever as far as the choices I make and the shot selection and things like that. Um, definitely simpler than I used to play. I used to drive the ball a lot more and use a lot more spin and... Um, this just feels like it's so much easier what I'm doing now and it's kind of the way I teach as well this is probably one of my better breaks not only did I make all the balls however nice cue ball control um, etc so this is a pretty easy rack everything's kind of out in the open um, this is another good way to practice actually is uh, I learned this from Jerry Bryzath. Uh, he called it like the perfect ghost. My friend Brett has a really cool name for it that escapes me right now. But um, it, it's a cool way to practice. You basically throw out three or four balls to start, and you take ball in hand, um, and you, and you try to run run them out perfectly. Um, basically, you you the cue ball lands roughly where you intended to. Um, no difficult low percentage shots, no bank shots, no nothing crazy where you're having to fly the cue ball on the table or anything. You're basically trying to play nice, clean, perfect patterns. Um, you try to do it 10 times or ideally 20 times um, and, and keep track. And when you hit 15 or 16 out of 20, where you're at a, like a 75, 80% success rate, then you add another ball in the mix. So I would suggest you start this with three balls if you're in beginner intermediate. Learn your basic three ball patterns. Get used to looking two, three balls ahead. Um, and then if you're, as you advance, you can add a couple more balls in. Um, I've had some very good players see me do this back in the day with five balls and say, oh, I can do that all the time. And I challenge them to do it, and, and usually they're at like... 40 or 50 percent success at, at best um it, it's a lot more difficult doing it quote unquote perfectly than playing an actual game because you don't have the ability if you're honest with yourself to shoot these 
lower percentage shots or recover with a bank shot or fling the cue ball all the way around the table or whatever. Um, so try that sometime. Um, it's a good way to practice, and it also really gets you used to practicing kind of your end game patterns where there's only four or five uh, balls on the table. Um, so it's a, it's a good way to practice. Like I said, when I do it, um, I do it with six balls or seven, and I've never gotten past seven. I'm usually around 12 or 13 out of 20 with seven balls. So uh, it is you have to be a very, very good player to, to get, get to seven or eight balls with that caveat kind of thrown in. I'll mention real quick, too, you'll see me move the nine ball and then kind of put it back a couple times when I'm taking the rack off. Um, the Aki rack has a little bit of a smaller hole in it. Uh, it's a little more difficult to remove it without dislodging the nine, which tends to stay in that rack area. And uh, I don't worry about it when I'm practicing, uh, you know, a quarter inch or a half inch of, of replacing the nine possibly is not slightly, not exactly where it was, is not going to make a big difference. So I'm just going to use a high ball and a, just a touch of inside English um, to come around for the three. Don't 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 always feel like you got to torque the ball with a ton of English. I mean, I used probably like a quarter tip there, uh, angled my cue slightly. Very little need to adjust for deflection or anything like that, especially if you have a any sort of low deflection shaft. I kind of forced this ball back out around the eight. Um, Watching this back now, I could have gone forward three rails as well with high inside. Um, the high inside is probably a little higher percentage just because you can hit the ball a little softer, but um, either way, as long as you uh, execute properly. You saw me go down and look at my angle here. I want to see how far I need I need to draw the ball back, uh, kind of what my, my range is. Uh, there's no reason to just draw the ball randomly and... and hope that wherever you land you end up with a good angle. It's better to visualize it from the other side, kind of see where you need to get. Here I choose to draw back over to the, the lawn rail and back out to the center line of the table. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Again, you should have good speed control, be able to execute that. You could also go forward with some inside English, but I feel that's a lower percentage. Hitting the ball in the center axis is always safer if possible. Here I'm going to do the same thing, just a little below center and just a nice simple stunt shot. And I get straight on this, so I need to just pull it, pull it straight back. So, stayed in line pretty well on, on, on that. Um, so if I didn't lose count, I think that's 5-0. Um, I'll take that any day, obviously, not 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 uh, losing any games. Um, again, you know, I made some some mistakes along the way and, and got fortunate on one or two of the, the the shots the way they landed. But I mean, that is cool. Some days, like that very first game, some days you land straight on the nine ball. Sometimes you land frozen to it. But if you play your patterns correctly, you're not you're not counting on luck. Or, or fortune to get you a good leave. You know, you're the proper distance from the ball and the proper angle, at least roughly speaking, and, and um, it's all about keeping that consistency up. So, not a bad break here. I just let the cue ball go a little more than I intended, but like I said before, I'm, my break's not great right now. I'm, I'm hoping over the next month or so to put some time in as my stomach muscles continue to heal and uh, get ready for the next kind of bigger event that I'm going to. Uh, so it's a, it's a little tougher for me to stretch out right now. Uh, I definitely took a lot of that for granted before uh, and um, obviously that'll, that'll get back to normal here pretty soon but 
I, I remember struggling a bit with my cue ball placement on this. Uh, didn't want to be like kind of elevated over the eight or the nine and trying to find that happy window. And um, you'll see I, I mishit this a little bit. I think I set my angle up a little. The angle's not bad. I think I just mishit the ball a little bit. And uh, I get away with it just because I wasn't that far off. Um, I just normally would not want to touch that five at all. I'd want to be more in the center of the table, probably about a foot or so further down. But um, it worked out. Now, because of that, now I have to hit a recovery shot. And you'll see I have to hit this one pretty good to kind of force it off the rail. That's what happens a lot in pool, too. You make a small mistake, and then it compounds itself into another mistake. And... Sometimes you recover, uh, the better the player, the more often they recover, but a lot of times it just catapults into a miss. Um, things just kind of spiral out of control. You'll actually kind of see that here. Uh, I intend to go four rails around the table, just a nice, simple, natural pattern, but I misjudged the amount of spin and end up running into the nine. So now I ran into two balls in a row. I, I hate doing that. Uh, it's fine to run into them if you intend to and you're careful about it, but... You never want to keep doing that on accident. One thing I did do well here, though, you'll see I'm trying to recover now. So you'll see, uh, you saw where I pointed my cue. I wanted to see if I hit the ball naturally, where would I end up? And would that be good enough to not have to do anything fancy with the cue ball to get on the seven? Let's just accept this shot and now hit a very common standard, you know, back and forth across the table. Just make the ball and, and get on the eight. And overall, if you continue to do things like that, except a slightly tougher shot that you know is going to get you back in a line, as opposed to shooting a really fancy shot trying to get in perfect line, um, it, it's often, if you couple those two things together, it's often a much better choice just to not try to recover it all at once. I remember when I was younger, I would um, always juice the ball up and, and spin the crap out of it, trying to get perfect on every ball. And, you know, hey, when you if you're a good player and you're on, that works great. And even some of the guys I play with here locally and regionally, uh, there's a few guys that have games like that, that they're always driving the ball a lot and kind of shooting the ball and not afraid to take on so, some more difficult patterns um, and again if you're confident in that and if you're playing a lot that that works great uh, I worked hard a couple years ago to kind of simplify my game maybe I went a little too conservative and and don't shoot enough of those kind of shots sometimes but um, you know I, I don't I, I don't play as much as I used to so I, I like to like to keep things at a high consistent level and, and, and not rely on all of that. Anyways, um, this is just another classic, you know, center of the table position. It works great on so many shots. There's so many drills out there that emphasize that as well. Now, I'm, I do do the smart thing. I don't always do this. I, I should. Uh, I came. I come down to look where I want to get. Uh, I don't want to end up getting a quarter inch or a half inch hooked on the nine ball. But um, as you'll see, I shied away from the nine a little bit too much, which is a better mistake to make than the other way. However, because I, I let the key ball come up just a little bit, now I need to go away from the five ball uh, and come back to it. Uh, but again, this should be a fairly routine type shot. Um, you just have to decide if you're going to go down and back up between the 7 and 9 or go around it. And I think I decided to go around it here with just a little bit of outside spin. Yeah. And I underhit this a little bit, and now I'm almost straight in. Um, and uh, again, this is a very missable shot. Um, and, and uh, I'm trying to look to see where the minimum is I have to come to, but 
this is probably the, my stroke was a little pumpy. I, I think if I remember the elbow kind of went up a little bit, but I hit this really well. So pretty, pretty happy with that shot. Uh, it's very easy to miss that shot at that speed. So again, I should have stood there an extra second or two. I kind of walked over there and glanced. I always feel like I'm taking more time than I really am. And uh, I pulled the cue ball back just another inch or two. And now I've got to either draw it down on the short side of the eight or go off the rail and back out again. Uh, if I would have stopped dead, I would have had a nice simple drawback shot for the eight. But... Again, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. That's probably an understatement. I'm probably a lot of a perfectionist in just everything I do. Um, but, but it is a good way to think about things and, and think about the game as long as you, you, know, you don't have to be as crazy as I am with it. But, um, you know, all, like I said, all these little mistakes can add up. I mean... Someone else might watch this and say, "Oh, you, you know, beating the ghost six nothing." Uh, a lot of people cannot beat the ghost, uh, even some decent players. But um, I, I, me in my brain, I don't look at it that way. I, I, I see all the mistakes I made, and I, I think probably four out of the six racks so far, I had mistakes that honestly could have gone either way. Um, I just look at percentages. You know, if I'm shooting a shot. I want to be shooting like 95 to 98 percent shots as often as possible, and kind of limit the the shots where your where your make percentage goes down to like 80 or 70. Um, I've I've done the math on that stuff, and it's it's crazy how how few of those shots it takes to really really reduce your chances of running out. Okay, so I scratched on this one, and I scratched directly in the side. Normally, when I play the ghost. I'll do one of two things. I'll either give myself one freebie like that and still take ball in hand and continue to run out if I can, or I will just count it as a loss and move on to the next game, um, especially if it's directly into the side like that. Um, you can play whichever rules you want. If you're more of a beginning player, um, especially if you're doing like a four ball or five ball or six ball ghost, I mean, for sure, just the idea of this is to take ball in hand and, and work on getting out, so don't be too hard on yourself. but. If I'm breaking better, what I actually like to do when I play the Ghost is I like to force myself at least three out of my... If I'm playing a nine, I like to force myself to do at least three out of the nine racks with no ball in hand. Um, and if I don't do it, I don't count them. I start counting them as losses um, toward the end. That makes it really tough. Uh, people that are kind of a notch above me, I, I know people that will play nine ball Ghost with no ball in hand and still beat it. And that's... Uh, that's tough to do. Um, I certainly my break would have to be much better to be doing that, and it's nowhere in that kind of shape right now. So I'm not sure what I did here. Um, I remember being a little indecisive as to whether I wanted to play the cue ball down almost where it is, play the four in the side, or whether I wanted to just kind of float off the lawn rail and play the four down in the corner. I was trying to figure out what angle I wanted to get on the five easily. And uh, I probably overthought it a little bit. You can see all this hesitancy and everything, and um, I end up just kind of bobbling the shot, which was a little disappointing because I think I was at 7-0 at this point. And, uh, you know, I got perfect where I wanted to get. I just, just missed the ball. But I guess I should be thankful that I didn't miss any of the other kind of difficult shots that could have gone either way along the way. Otherwise, I would have been at, you know, 4-3 to three or 5-2 to two or something like that instead of 7-1 seven, seven, as it is right now. So when I'm playing the 9-ball ghost, I'm definitely better than 50%, um, probably maybe in the 80 or 90%, and I'm typically at about a 2 or 3-to-1 ratio, so it means for every 2 or 3 games I win, um, I, I probably lose a game, so... On an average day, I might win 9-5, 9-6, 9-7. 
if I'm playing bad, it's still possible to lose, of course, uh, and lose on the flip side of that, like a 9-6, nine, 9-7. Nine, and then if I'm playing fairly decently, um, it'd be more the 3-to-1 ratio, so I, I usually will win maybe 9-3 or 9-4, so... Um, well, this particular time I'm at, uh, uh, I think I finished at 9-2. I think I ended up not showing the last game here because my camera stopped. But um, So I think right now I'm at 7-1. But um, So I can't complain about that, uh, especially for not playing much over the last few months. But I feel that's a credit to the work I put into my game over the last few years to try to not use as much spin and not drive the ball as much and try to use little simpler patterns and, and uh, things like that. Certainly 10 years ago, if I had quit playing for a month or two, it would have taken me another month to get back in stroke. Um, and there's people that have games like that. They, they, they complicate some of the things they do and they hit the ball harder than they need to and use more spin than they need to, but they can still be very, very good players. I just feel you need to really stay in a lot of action to be able to manage that type of game. Um, and uh, I really watch a lot of YouTube videos and, and study different aspects about it as opposed to just watching the match. And I think if you really watch a player's rhythm and watch the decisions they make and everything like that, try to find somebody who has a similar maybe build to you or similar stroke or rhythm to you, it's, uh, it's really a good thing to pay attention to. I remember this shot. Um, I felt like if I hit it with center ball, um, I would drift up a little further than I wanted. So I, I tried to come to the end rail and back down. A um, little risky. There was probably a, a better way of doing that. But, um, you know, it, it worked out. Again, it's all about trying to eliminate some of these lower percentage shots. You want to try to if at all possible, just keep things simple, not having to draw the ball a ton or spin the ball a ton, just try to use natural position. This is just like the first or second rack where the nine stayed in the area of the rack. And um, I don't need any inside English here, nothing fancy, just hit it with a high ball, let the follow carry it forward of the normal tangent line a little bit, and then uh, just trust your speed control. You'd rather be a little bit on the high side of the ball like I am here than be on the low side where you're shooting on the 50-yard line and having to deal with scratches and um, extra clean on the shot and everything like that. So, Okay, so um, I think I finished the set at 8-1. Um, I remember thinking for some reason I was done now, but after looking, watching it back, uh, I missed the game. Um, I did play after this for a little while as well with the camera off, and uh, if I remember correctly, the the game after this, I made a silly mistake, and then um, and then ran a rack or two after that. So if I would have gone to the full nine, uh, it would have been like nine two. Um, but um, you know, this is still good. A lot of times I play ghost races just to seven because a lot of our tournaments go to seven locally, and um, so. In any event, um, not too bad, especially considering the practice time I've had for the last few months. Um, uh, hopefully, uh, whoever may or may not be watching this, um, you know, you'll enjoy having the commentary added to it as opposed to just watching somebody play the ghost. Um, and, and I hope between the commentary and some of the shooting, um, you know, if you can take away a few things from it, um, that's great. Um, Again, you know, I try to watch a lot of people on YouTube. I watch a lot of the pros. Um, I tend to stick to the guys that have great fundamentals and keep things uh, simple and smooth. I think, my, in my opinion, for me at least, that's the best way to play. Uh, there's certainly some very good kind of fast and loose players out there, kind of like your Stricklands or Jason Shaw's, uh, and, and I'm talking even locally, guys like that. Uh, there's certainly a lot of guys that love to, you know, really drive that ball and spin the ball and, and take pleasure in like hitting these difficult shots and stuff. But again, while I can do those things, if I need to, I, I really just try to, I think the name of the game is simplicity and consistency. 
And if you watch most of the top players, that's what you're going to see. Um, so again, thanks for watching. Um, please, please uh, definitely let me know what you think. This is the first time I've done this. I'm hoping to do some more. I need to get a little bit better with this video tool and it's freezing on me every five or 10 minutes right now. And I got to figure out how to do some, maybe some graphic overlays for positional shots and things like that. But uh, please let me know what you think. If the commentary was helpful, if I talked too much, not enough, maybe I should just focus on a few shots here and there. But um, like I said, hopefully if you're watching this, you picked up a few things and um, thanks for watching.